Hey everybody and welcome back to The Creative Collector. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you my latest print and paint up statue, which is none other than, who else? The Punisher. No, not this one, one much bigger. So this model was created and designed by Jules Modelato, has a Patreon, which there is a link in the description right now. Go over and check out Jules. He's got some amazing talent. Uh, he's also got a couple of tiers on his Patreon, uh, one for comic statues and another one for horror statues. Go check him out after the video. So let's see what we got here. So this is the Punisher. This is a huge, larger quarter scale model that I printed, it's all in resin. Uh, I printed a lot of this on the Uniformation GK2 uh, for the smaller pieces and for the larger pieces, I printed off on the Frozen Sonic Mega 8K. This thing is a monster. Uh, I think it stands somewhere around like 27, 28 inches. Uh, as you can see, this is my hand up here. So you can kind of gather the size of this. So we're gonna take a look at this, uh, tell you about some of the things that I did on it, and then I'm gonna show you a couple of pretty cool weathering techniques you may already know about, but for those of you who don't, maybe you can pick something up on this to uh, weather your next model. And as you can see, this model is very, very cool. It's got the, uh, the bullet band on here, uh, the, the huge, huge gun right here, and this itty bitty tiny knife. This thing is massive for a statue here, and obviously he's been cutting up on some people, so um, also I've done just a basic black on the suit. I painted it just black overall, uh, the creating the, the different depth effect that I've got. I used uh, some light grays and some of the highs here. And as you can see, I've also got some of the buckles that are actually kind of shiny and stuff. All I did was uh, after I got done, uh, I just went and put a gloss texture on there or gloss paint on there, if you will and uh, just to create a little bit of contrast to it. And the same thing with the, uh, the pouches here. All I did was I just used like a leather brown just to dry brush over those areas. And uh, this thing is really neat. Look at all the textures and stuff in there. All, you can see all like the shrapnel and just the textures and stuff and the straps and everything. Jules did a one hell of a job on this model. And uh, this is just amazing how it turned out. Uh, with He is like sliding down this big piece of metal here. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it looks cool. And uh, there's a tire right here, a tire and a rim. And uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about how I did the weathering on that. And uh, But it's really, really simple, really cool technique that you can use in anything considering weathering. We're going to go over uh, how I weathered the boots. Again, another simple technique that you can use. And uh, let's go. So for the skin tones, I mixed up my own skin tones pretty much like I always do. If you're needing to learn how to mix up your own skin tones, check out one of the videos up in the corner now. Uh, there's actually a couple that I've done to show you how to mix up skin tones. Okay, so for the rust effects, what I used, these two colors right here from Vallejo, I used the uh, special effects corrosion and the rust from the game effects. These right here um, work really good when you're doing any kind of weathering whatsoever. So you can put it on however thick you want. Um, what you want to do is just take an old brush right here and you're just going to dabble it a little bit. You're not going to get any of it out. You're just going to kind of dabble it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your airbrush or if you don't have an airbrush, you can take like compressed air or something like that. And all you're going to do is just hold it back from it and just splatter it like this. And then you kind of get that splatter effect all up on there and just keep doing this over and over. If you want it heavy in some areas, you're going to go heavier, but you're not going to actually spray stuff out of your airbrush. You're just wanting to use this as an air source. So again, if you have like canned air, uh, I don't recommend blowing on it with your mouth because you're not gonna get that same effect. But yeah, you're just gonna put it on there like so. You just keep doing that on there until you're satisfied with how much you got on there. And as far as like the little rustical uh, things right here, all I do is I just take that same rust and I just kinda, you know, bring it down a little bit like it's kinda running a little bit. You just kinda do some of the edging right here. And uh, yeah, so it just gives it a really neat effect. And then on the light rust, I'm gonna go ahead and add thinner to this. I'm gonna thin it down pretty good and uh, just get it real watery. I'm not gonna use water 
uh, when you do this, water tends to bead up and it doesn't really uh, show any of the pigment. Once it dries, it kind of is transparent a little bit. So with this, all I'm going to do is, again, I'm just going to go back and do some of that. And then if it's really pulled up there, you can take and spray some of that and make it look like it's kind of running off like so. Kind of make it look like it's running all over the places. And if it's too much, you can take a Q-tip and just kind of dab it away a little bit. But usually the uh, light color, I just put over the dark color and it gives it a really nice contrast. Okay, so when it comes to the boots, it's very, very simple, very straightforward. I'm gonna use this dirt color right here. You can use whatever kind of brown that you want to get the ideal color that you're looking for. I use the light color because it shows up better on the black. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get one of these really porous sponges right here. And sometimes I like break them into half or whatever because I wanna get an uneven texture on it, an uneven surface, I should say. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda of dabble it into the paint a little bit, maybe sponge it out so a little bit, and then just kinda of put it on there like so like on the boots or anywhere you want to see any kind of dirt show up. It, very simple, very simple effect, uh, but very effective. And uh, it gives you a really nice texture. Uh, and then again, you can uh, however add however much you want on there, um, you know. And then, like I said, if you, if you wanna do like some type of scratching, like dirt scratching or something, all you gotta do is just, you know, like so. And then there you go. So very simple, very effective type of uh, weathering. So for the rock base, all I did was I took and I painted a dark gray over everything. And then I actually went in and put a, a nice black wash over everything. And then I would basically wiped a lot of that away. Uh, just be careful, don't wipe too hard because you can actually wipe some of the paint off. And then after that, I just went back and I added some of the dirt like I just showed you, like in some of the areas that you see that are discolored and everything. Uh, and you can use that airbrush if you want. You can take and just flick the paint with a brush on there and kind of dab it back on there a little bit. And then I just dry brushed a nice light slate gray over all this. And on some of the highlights, again, a little bit of even a lighter gray uh, to bring some of that out to make it stand out a little bit. Uh, and the tire is just a basic black, uh, just painted it black. Uh, and then I used a tire black to dry brush it a little bit. And of course I did all that weathering in there. I uh, basically painted the, uh, the rim here like a gunmetal gray. I sealed it and then I went back over it uh, with a little bit of this chrome paint to kind of help resemble some scratches and stuff in there. And I didn't seal it after that. So the one thing with the chrome paint is if you seal the chrome, uh, if you seal the paint with the chrome underneath it, it's gonna really dull it out. So as you see on here, a lot of this really stands out. It's real shiny. Um, so all I did was I did some chipping and some scratching with that chrome paint uh, from Leo. And um, I did not seal it after I did that uh, because I wanted that to stand out. That look of that really, uh, just butchered metal, the scrapes and everything. And, you know, the bolts and the screws really stand out as far as the rust and then the, again, the, the metal scratches and everything. So this model was really, really detailed. And, uh, but I wanted to take it a little step further because it is a bigger model and um, it turned out nice, I think. So I did have a little bit of a failure. I did have a big hole and I wish I would have uh, had footage of it, but I had a big hole right in here. So all I did was I had a couple other pieces uh, from a previous print that failed, and these three rocks right here, I just took and just clipped them off and just put them right here, and it looks pretty good. It looks like it's a part of the, uh, the base here. So again, that's why you never want to throw away an old print because you can always utilize those in uh, other areas like I did on this one. And then uh, I just did basically just some highlighting on some of the rocks there up underneath. I did some of the scratching and some of the chipping, some of the rust effects as well on this. This is one huge base here. 
and uh, I actually printed this base on the Sonic Mega 8K and it's spliced here and then spliced another part up um, right in here which you really can't see because I did the seam work right there it turned out okay um, but this is like three maybe four pieces right here on this base and to show you how big this thing is it's it's friggin tall and then uh, again the clothes are very simple it was black shin guards I did in a gunmetal gray and then I did a black wash over them and then again I did some of the chrome chipping and then some of the dirt speckling on there like I just showed you uh, again little accents that can really make your statue pop like for these tabs right here on the shoes I just added just a clear gloss on it uh, the same thing that I did here on the buckles I just added a clear gloss over the black and it kind of makes it stand out pretty neat kind of gives it a little bit of dimension uh, really makes it pop a little bit for some of these areas to stand out uh, and Jules even did like some of the little if you could see it right there the little button with the skull on it it's pretty cool just another added touch that he did and then um, he did a lot of scars and stuff a lot of open wounds and stuff on the face and on the hands and all I did there was I just added the red and um, uh, you know just glossed it over a little bit with a little satin varnish and then on the veins veins are pretty simple I want to do a video on that but it's there's really not a lot that you can really tell to take up a whole video uh, I just really diluted a lot of bluish purple mix and just applied it to there I mean it's pretty simple and I did the blood spackling right here on the fist and on the arm the same way I did with the boot with this uh, with this brush right here uh, or you can use any kind of brush for that matter uh, but gives it a nice weathering effect one of the other things that Jules did was he goes into a lot of detailing here on the arms and he did a lot of these raised lines I'm assuming it was <laughs> hair uh, I, that's what I used it as so in order to do that effect I used one of these big makeup brushes right here and I just put some black paint down dabbed it on there real good I pretty much got a lot of that off and I just went over it I just dry brushed it really lightly on several passes until I got some of that uh, looking hair out of there I guess it's hair it's all like all up on the arm here um, but it gives it a really really nice effect um, on the skin tones that I did I mixed up my own color like I said earlier um, and it's just pretty straightforward if you've seen one of my videos you've seen them all when it comes to skin tones um, I just went in and uh, just uh, did my shading and stuff like that that I normally do I did do the freckling on the face you probably can't see a lot of it uh, for on the video if you unless you get really up close the teeth the eyes I did all that um, and the hair was black and I actually dry brushed a little bit of that light brown over the top of it just to give it a little bit of contrast and for the gun it's just a basic black and then uh, I just went and added the chipping and a lot of the the weathering and the battle damage and stuff like that for the gun so the statue does stand 29 inches tall from the bottom of the base to the tip of the gun and uh, it's a big boy. It's a little bit bigger than a normal quarter scale. I sized it up to 150% to Jules regular file size. And I found out that that's just a little bit bigger than a normal quarter scale. Uh, but I'm happy with it. It's almost a borderline one third scale. It was real fun. And I'm looking forward to printing and painting some more of Jules work.
All right, everybody, I hope some of those tips helped you in your future printing and painting endeavors. And it's that part of the video where I do want to give a special thanks to my Patreon members, uh, where we just released a couple of new models this month, uh, Serpentor and Scarlet from the G.I. Joe series we got going on. And I also released a very special file for my long-term supporters. Now, if you want to be a member of the Patreon where you can get in on the models with the $10 tier, that is, then the link is below in the description. We would love to have you over there. We do have our private Discord where we talk everything, printing and painting, and then some other stuff we probably shouldn't even talk about. Speaking of Patreon members, we got a couple of new ones this week. Let's find out who it is. Long Fam, Abby Diogardi, Mario S, and Stephen Foster. Thank you all so much for becoming the newest Patreon members. And again, that link is below in the description if you want to join. And don't forget about Jules Model Auto's Patreon. The link is also below in the description along with my Patreon. Go over and check Jules out. He's got some fabulous work. And like always, be safe out there. Get out and create something. Print, prep, paint, repeat. And until the next video, everybody, we'll see you. And this is one on the horror Patreon over at Jules. Do you like scary movies? Well, hell yeah, I do. Go check him out.